Hi, how are you? Welcome along to another part of our book, The Girl Who Stole an Elephant by Nizrana Farik. Today we're going to do chapters six and seven. All right. Um, I had a little flick through and just there weren't any new words that we're going to come across today. Maybe the only new word that isn't really, I don't think, used much is this word here that we'll come across today. The word is whinnying or whinny and then ing. It's a name as well, isn't it? But spelled differently. But a horse whinnies. That's a whinny. All right. Maybe you could have a listen out of your window right now. See if there's any horses whinnying nearby. You never know. There could be. Anyway, um, hey, did you see my intro thing and my new logo at the top my my biggest son made them for me so thanks very much Blake they're cool anyway let's get on with chapter six and seven shall we you ready sitting comfortably let's do it can you believe it how dare she Chaya paced the workshop her throat felt tight as she pummeled her thighs with her fists what a nightmare where on earth were the jewels Neil slumped at his work table, his forehead resting on his hands. It was a good thing that Kamar the carpenter wasn't in again. Neil wasn't even bothering with his work today. Maybe, he said, his voice muffled as he looked down at the table, maybe they're safe now that they're with her. Safe? Maybe the jewels are safe, but what about the people? It's so awful, Neil. Chaya flopped against a half-built wardrobe, the shelves digging into her back. General Ceres still harassing the villagers. He won't give up, not, with a, not without a confession. Neil fingered the note. I don't understand why she's taken them. Her father is Kasim the Merchant. They're rich, aren't they? How did she find out how to open it in one night, said Chaya, stalking around the workshop. How did she even work out there was a secret compartment? Ridiculous. She can't be that clever thinks she can outwit us. No way. Neil shook his head. It doesn't matter. She must have guessed something was up from the way we were acting, and she did say the box felt heavy. The question is, what do we do now? We've got to... Chai's mouth dropped open as she saw a slim figure dressed in red walking through the paddy fields towards them. Of all the nerve. Neil, she said, her eyes on the figure. Neil, it's her. Neil's head whipped up. Nawa stepped gingerly through the field, her eyes on the ground. She came into the workshop and stopped in front of them, hands on her hips. Where is my box? She said. I want it back. Where are our jewels? Said Chaya, leaning over the table. Thief? Chaya, began Neil. Nawa laughed. May I remind you that it wasn't me who broke into somebody's house and stole things? That's different said Chaya. I was taking back what was ours. Neil held up his hand. Listen. Ours? Pfft, snorted. Really? I bet the king would beg to differ. There was silence in the workshop. She knew. Now knew everything. Miss Now, Neil stood up. Please, it's not how you think. We need the jewels because of what General Siri is doing to the villagers. We have to give them back and save our people. That's not the only reason, snapped Chaya. We also want them because they are ours, not hers. She glared at Nao before turning back to Neil. And stop calling her Miss. She's not better than you in any way. Chaya, be quiet. I'm sure we can discuss this come. She should have just stayed out of it, said Chaya, jabbing a finger at Nao. The girl had put them all in danger with her silliness, poking her nose into other people's business, taking what's not hers. Hey! Now I threw up her hands. I bought the box. Well, the price didn't include the jewels, said Chaya, so you can't have them. Who said I wanted them? Now I looked scornful. I only want my box, not the Queen's jewels. I'm not a thief. She took a drawstring bag out of her pocket and flung it on the table, which is more than I can say for the pair of you. Chaya stared at the little bag. Neil snatched it up and pulled it open. The sound of jewels clinking together made Chaya's heart soar. Thank you so much, Miss Nah. Thank you for understanding, said Neil. Neil, she's not doing us a favour. The jewels aren't hers to give away. Of course I'm doing you a favour, said Nah. I mean, I could tell my father if you like. Oh no, Miss Nah, please don't do that, said Neil. I'll make sure you get... I'll make sure I get you your box. Actually, 
He went up to the shelves and moved some trinkets to the front. Please choose any one you want, or two, or three, or whatever. Now I stepped around the work table to the shelves. Chaya marched after her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Neil, what's this about two or three? Neil closed his eyes. Chaya, I'm begging you. But then you'll have to pay your master with your wages. As it is, he pays you so little. Now I ignored them and rummaged on the shelves. Stop it. Neil hissed at Chaya. We got the jewels. Don't ruin it now. Someone cleared their throat behind them. Chaya turned around to see two men had walked into the workshop. They were dressed in identical guard uniforms and they stamped their shoes on the core rug, looking round with interest. Behind them, some more people followed through the fields and in a distance beyond the paddy fields, Chaya could see a group of riders on horseback. The ground listed under her feet as a wave of dizziness swept through her. It was the king's men. We're just searching the area, said one of the guards had come in, nodding respectfully at Chaya and Noah. If you two will just wait outside. Hey, said the other to Neil. You, boy, what's that you hid on your shelf there? Nothing, said Chaya. He works here. His master, Kamar the Carpenter, is away. You should come back another time. Some of the rest of the group approached the workshop. Get General Siri, said the man who shouted at Neil. Something's going on in here. There was a sudden rush of movement. Chaya swung round. Four men surrounded Neil and one was rummaging around on a shelf. Now a stepped forward and tried to say something but froze as the man swept his spear back and forth among the wooden knickknacks, knocking things over and sending them crashing to the floor. <gasps> Stop it! shouted Chaya, but her voice was drowned out by the clatter of falling wood as item after item of Neil's hard work smashed on the floor. A swarm of the king's men crowded around the workshop, almost blocking out the light. Soon, General Siri was at the doorstep, one corner of his lip pinned back in a permanent sneer. What do we have here? Oh, his voice was hoarse. I didn't see that bit. What do we have here? His voice was hoarse and broken. The carpenter's away. Oh, the carpenter's away, said Chaya. Not doing very well today, am I? You should come back when he's in. Your men have done enough damage here. General Siri's eyes swept around the workshop. I don't think so. We'll continue to search it now. But the owner isn't in. Chaya stepped up to the doorway and blocked the entrance. I insist that you come back another time. General Siri laughed indulgently. Whoever you are, miss, out of the way now. General Siri, said a voice behind Chaya. Sir, the boy hid something as we came in. We found it. Chaya turned around to see the man hold out Nawa's drawstring bag. General Siri took it in his dry, cracked hands, and fear slashed deep into Chaya's heart. Oh no! So Nawa returned the jewels only for those guards to come in and now find the jewels in Neil's workshop. Who do you reckon's going to get the blame? I reckon it's going to be Neil, isn't it? Oh my goodness, this is just getting worse and worse and worse. Here we go. Chapter 7. Let him go. It wasn't him, said Chaya as the guard seized Neil. Someone shoved her against the wall as the men pushed past, dragging Neil through the doorway. Well, well, General Siri slapped Neil on the back of his head. So we find you at last. Trust me, boy. It's all over for you. The king's men crowded round them and Chaya lost sight of Neil. She scrambled up the half wall and jumped over, following the glimpse of his pastel blue shirt as he was taken away in the surge of men. Wait! she screamed. It wasn't him! Wait! A guard grabbed her and pulled away. Stay out of this, miss! Chaya struggled against him, her hair catching in his copper buttons. Let me go! Chaya hit out of the guard. She heard the crack of bone on bone and saw blood pool out of his lips, leaving her knuckles stinging. She slipped out of his grasp and ran towards the front, fighting her way through the throng of men. It wasn't him! It was me! It was me! Chaya's screams burned her throat, but no one took any notice. She saw two men at the front haul Neil into a cart. Bodies hit against her, buffet, buffeting her from side to side, and her ears rang with the whinnying of horses and crunch of cartwheels. Something scraped against her arm, leaving a slash of blood. She thrust her way to the front, where the purple waistcoat of General Siri flashed golden at the seams, sitting high on his horse. Chaya threw herself in front of him, blocking the way. The horse reared up, and General Siri gaped down at her. What the? Get out of the way before you get killed, you idiot! It was me, yelled Chaya. I stole the jewels. It wasn't Neil. 
General Siri looked confusedly at a deputy next to him. The man shook his head. This is Headman Sarath's daughter. She's friends with the boy. Her father lets her mix with all sorts. He spat on the ground. Get out, said General Siri to Chaya. A guard pulled her off the path, grabbing her by the neckline of her dress, the cloth cutting into her neck. No, wait! The words stuck in her throat. Her palms slammed into gravel as he pushed her by the wayside and the sounds rolled away. Please! She screamed again. He didn't do it. It was me! She scrabbled up and dusted her sandy, bloody hands, but by then the whole convoy was disappearing into the distance. Chaya trudged back to the workshop and sat on Neil's empty stool. She put her head down on his work table and punched the surface. Tears spilled down her face and darkened the partly carved lotuses he'd been working on. She had to pull herself together. There was no time to waste. She was the one who'd got Neil into this and it was up to her to fix things. She looked up and dried her eyes. There was a movement in the corner of the workshop. Now was still standing by the far wall. What on earth? earth chaya glared at her i'm sorry about what happened said now i really go away said chaya you shouldn't even be here you tried to take the blame now i seemed to consider chaya her head cocked to one side i am to blame chaya got up and paced the room she had to help neil but what could she do why did you do it said now do what would you just leave i don't have time for this right now but now I stayed where she was, staring outside as if deep in thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, she said, turning to Chai briefly, you know the consequences of being caught. Why did you even say he did it, even if it was true? Because Neil is my friend. Is that so hard for you to understand? Now I stared at Chai for a few moments before turning back to the outside again. Chaya picked up Neil's carving tools that had been scattered on the floor when he was dragged out. She felt Nawa's eyes on her as she wrapped them in a rag and dropped them into her pocket. Where are you going? asked Nawa as Chaya made for the outside. Chaya ignored her. Wait! Nawa hurried up behind. Aren't you going to need aren't you going to help your friend? Chaya turned to her sharply. Of course I am. How? Now ran beside Chaya, struggling to keep up on a narrow path without stumbling into the paddy field. How are you going to help him? By doing what I do best. And what's that? By breaking into places and making off with stuff, said Chaya. And she strode away as now I stared after her in surprise. <sighs> oh my goodness. I can't wait for tomorrow to see what happens tomorrow. Oh my goodness. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon. Bye bye.